Hi, my name's Greg from Ride ADV. We're a tour company on the east coast of Australia. We run some of Australia's best adventure rides. We've had the T700 now since November last year. And we did the launch with Yamaha Australia. We've now got over 120,000 accumulated kilometres on these bikes here and a couple of satellite bikes we look after and some other bikes. And we'd like to share what we're at now and what we've found since we've got the bikes. We don't use one thing, we try everything we can lay our hands on and we pay for all our bits and pieces. We've got up to 11 riders that are going to share their opinions, or I'm going to share their opinions with you on what we've seen and what we've tested. So come on, let's have a look and see what we've got. I'm going to start with bash plates because that's one of the first bits you really want to doesn't come really well protected with a genuine one so we'll start with bash plates we've got four different bash plates we tested and I'll go through them now this is the Outback Motor Trek great bash plate offers good protection the only thing I really don't like about it is the quality of the, the fasteners they're a tapered hex screw we use snap-on tools but even then when you're pulling them off every time you change the oil we've had trouble with the fasteners that's a bit of a downer but the bash plate itself, good bash plate, lightweight, good quality, good mounts, easy to take on and off. Second one is the genuine Yamaha hard part, let's call it. Great bash plate, plenty of protection, probably a little bit higher up in the protection the Outback Motor Trek. Easy to take on and off, second lightest on the ones we've tested. Good bash plate, like it, good thing. Third one is the most expensive one by a long shot, and it's the Camel bash plate from Canada. Uh, plenty of protection all around, good quality. By the way, the Outback Motor Trek one has a little protector for the shock linkage. The genuine one has a tiny one. This has a big protector that protects the shock linkage underneath, and we'll get some pictures of that in a minute. And it's also got that nylon strip for all the rocks hitting it there. That's a good bash plate. Um, no real cons to it, just a good quality bash plate. All right, the biggest con, sorry, it's expensive. And the last one, but not least, is our B2B Yamaha uh, sorry, B2B Yamaha 700, proudly made in Australia. Our choice for a bash plate. Uh, it comes out, protects the water pipe pipes, um, lots of protection underneath, good wrap up the front, good strong bash plate, easy to take on, easy to take off, no real cons. Comes in the in the in the uh, polished alloy, also comes in the black. Now, if this bash plate has a con, it would be that the black is like a plastic coated. And it, and it hits and it frays a little bit, but oh god, we're being picky at that. So that's the bash plates. I'll let the guys get some zooms in and out, and we'll go forward from there.
Crash bars. Something my sweet riders know something about here at Ride ADV. They've given a bit of a test. We've tried a few crash bars, and because of our Ride ADV workshop, we've fitted a lot of crash bars. The two bars in the market, I believe the three bars in the market of the pick, is the Yamaha Genuine Hard Part Bar, which I'll get back to in a minute, the Outback Motor Track Upper Lower Crash Bar Set, and the SW Motec Bar, which I don't have here, but we have used. Okay. I'll cover the three bars off my thing. SW Motec's very similar in its design and shape as the Yamaha bar, but we found that the bar came back and interfered with the rider's knees, especially blokes that slid up the, up the bike a lot, interfered with their knees. That was one problem. These bars here are our bar of choice uh, for the crew. They're a light bar, they don't weigh much, they offer plenty of protection, they stick out far enough to protect the water pump engine cases and this side of the bike. As I said, a few of my crew members have tested the bars. They haven't bent. Well, sorry, we have one bend in a little bit at the top. We just bounced it back out by tying it to a strap and bouncing off a pole. Popped it back out, no problem. They're great. We're happy with those. Next level of protection are these. Now, these are to the best level of protection that I've fitted and that I've done here in the workshop. And for that side, I like them. The con to these bars, they're terrible to fit. They don't fit. The quality of the welds, the welds come down here, they stick out, the bolts hit on the welds, they won't go down properly, we have to turn the heads down to make room for them on the lathe, which is great if you have a lathe. The other problem we have is this top mount up here that goes into the cylinder head, it's always angled wrong and we've got to re-bend it. If they sort those couple of things out, these at-bat motor track crash bars would be a really, really good thing. As it is, they're a good thing, they're just a real pain to fit. Other than that, they're the two bars of choice. Like I said, we've paid for their bars, we've paid for their stuff, so that's what it is. Nothing for free, but they're probably the bar, two bars of choice, and they're our choice. Righto, rear racks, rear luggage racks. You'll notice none of the ride out of racks, bikes, sorry, bar one, have a top rack, and I'll get to that later. When we first got into the, the bike coming out and we got all excited, I was inspired by some racks that Craig Hartley had made at Dolby Moto for the 640 KDM a mate of mine had. They were as far forward as you could, they hugged the side of the bike, and they were as low as you could get safely. And that's what I wanted to replicate. So us working with Ron Sant, Sant Engineering, we designed these racks. Now these are some early prototypes. We used some, some hoops from Outback Motor Trek, and these were our early prototypes that the boys are still using now. These are right ADV solo racks, no pillion peg. They're good, they're strong, you can put rotor packs on them. They take any sort of luggage, any sort of soft luggage, so we were happy with them. As we developed through, we came down to this rack now. This is the rack we sell with a rotor pack mount on it. It has the three mounting points, no pillion pegs, works with our homemade steg pegs we're fiddling with and we'll get to those later. These things are super strong, no back brace required. We've been testing them now and using them now since November. So we've got about over 120,000 Ks on them now. They're a good thing, we're happy with those. But they aren't pillion compatible. So come over here. These are the Outback Motor Track racks. Now, uh, these are pillion compatible. We've still got a pillion peg and everything here. Um, the reason we've done what we did is we wanted it further forward, keep the center of gravity in the center of the bike. These ones are a lot further back, but again, you can use a pillion. Uh, they have rotor pack mount on them. And one of the features are, if you come around the back here, Clay, people say, oh, you can put a rotor pack on the inside. And yes, you can put a rotor pack on the inside. Bruce, do you want to grab me that small rotor pack? Now. You can put a rotor pack on the inside, you can see the, the space there, you can have it on the outside. If you shoot this from the back, Clay, you'll see it's a pretty wide set up. Okay, and we'll go back and just compare it against our one over there while he's, he's bringing that around. So ours are a lot narrower and hug the bike. And this rotor pack, yep, will go on the inside, no two ways about it. You'll see up here, happy days, it sits up in here, that's great. The trouble is, when you go to use it, you have to take your bag off the outside, you have to undo the bolts here, and you have to take the rotor pack mount out in the rotor pack. It's cumbersome, yep, 
but it's easier than pushing your bike. Because as people will tell you, people that know me, people that know a crew, we have a saying, that is, the only, only time you have too much fuel is when you're on fire. So it does hold it on the inside, but it's a bit cumbersome. That's where we are with racks. We have used an SW Motec rack. They have a different setup and up here, it all clips on. It's very cumbersome, not for us. We were after the keeping the performance of the bike, and that's why we come up with our racks. Talk chain and sprockets because we've done the miles. Now uh, the bikes come out with uh, standard gearing. We ran the standard gearing and we tried a couple of variables. And when we tried the variables, we even tried some different sprockets. This is a ZF sprocket from Germany. Um, been a big fan of ZF gearboxes in my career, with my other part of my career. So I thought this would be a good thing. Uh, to put bluntly, I'm pretty disappointed. This sprocket's done about 7,000 kilometres. Clay, if you come in nice and close here, you can see on the load side it's 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 worn rapidly. Um, you can see by the shape of the teeth for 7,000 kilometres comparing to the standard sprocket. Nah, pretty ordinary. Also, we've geared most of our bikes up by going up one tooth on the front, um, and we've used RK sprockets. They've been okay. That one's done about 9,000 kilometres, so that's not too bad. Now you can see that that sprocket still has its original edge, but it's leading. You can see by the shape. Now, we've found from history, if we can catch that at that stage, where you can just see it starting to lead, if we throw a sprocket on, we'll get another 9,000 out of it before we have chain dramas, and before we do any wear on the back. And that is because your front sprocket wears first, because it goes around the most, and then that wears the chain, which wears the back sprocket. So if you can keep jumping on these puppies, you can increase the mileage of the other two. I know that history's always told us, and experience told us to replace them as a set, and yeah, sure, you can do that. But we've found that. So one of the big things when these bikes came out was everyone said, oh, the water pump, the water pump, oh! And a lot of the naysayers and whatever, so, yeah. Now, I have seen a water pump cover under here cracked. Have seen one fall over in a bike and broke it, fell on a rock, yep. No pump, seam one. So I went thought, oh, I'll get a cover. So we've got this SW Motec cover, and this is a nice piece of billet. Have a zoom in on this camera, man. Like, this is a nice piece of kit. No, no two ways, no kidding. Yep, no problems at all. So, there it is, all protected, bolted into the case. All right? Now, we're going to move over to another bike. Right, and so here's one without a, a billet cover. Now here's my thoughts, 120,000 kilometres in, you want to know my thoughts? $68.45 for that plastic cover. Now I'm going to buy a couple of them, I throw one in my sweep truck, and I throw one at one of my sweeps. And I'm betting another 120,000 kilometres we haven't replaced one, but I'll have it if I need to. Why would I do that rather than fit a billet cover? Let's go back to the billet cover. Right, so we're back at our billet cover. Let's say I impact this with a rock with a bit of force into here. Transfers across here. Let's say it pulls this stainless steel bolt out of the case or at the back here. You can see when the, you'll zoom around in here. See this comes up here. What if that rips that bolt out and breaks the back out of my engine case? Am I better off with a $68 cover? Maybe a bit of putty. Maybe I'm better off with all of that. So brake pads, rear brakes especially, some blow, had a bit of a dead feel to it compared to the 660 and the WRs. Um, so we, we, we only use genuine, we've tried other markets but we like the genuine stuff. So actually we found the 660 pads fit and they're a, um, uh, an organic pad. 
sorry, uh, yeah, an organic pad opposed to the cinder pad. So we've switched to XT660Z pads and we're a lot happier with those. Just food for thought next time you're buying a set, give it a try. So we're talking about the racks, we don't run rear racks. Now one of our bikes here, this is Clay's bike, Skid, our uh, medic sweep and film extraordinaire and just downright legend now. He has to have a rack for his makeup. Um, he puts his makeup on this rack, none of us use makeup. But now look, on a serious note, it works straight away with our bars. We just leave the spacer that our kit comes with off. We drilled a 15 mil hole in, this, in the rail and it fits perfectly. So you gotta remember, that Yamaha only recommend five kilos at the back here. And if you want your bike to handle, the last place you want any weight is up the back and up the, to up the top at the back. If you think I'm kidding, go and sit a pillion. Get them to sit right over the back of your bike and try and flick it through some corners. It's the last place you want any weight. I know a pillion and five kilos, not much difference, but all day riding, you'll notice it. So early in the piece, uh, I think at the start of the year, we got in touch with MSC in Australia here and uh, not far up the road, and they, they do make Rally Moto steering dampers and uh, they make a lot of good dampers. They have the new RM3 damper out. So we went, took a bike up, they made a kit up. We've got them on three of our, of our half a dozen odd seven bikes. Um, do they work? Yeah, they work great. Um, do they do anything in the sand? No, there's one of the biggest fallacies you'll ever see. You know, people go, oh, you know, I'll go on the steer and put a steering damper on the sand. Listen, if you're Toby Price and you're going across the top of the ruts, steering damper's great because a steering damper only stops high speed oscillations. Okay, high speed deflections, I should say. So if I jack this bike up, wind this damper on, I'll feel a little bit of resistance side to side. Sure, that's great. But where this steering damper really works is if I jack this bike up and I was to kick the end of this tire here as hard as I could, when the bike's in the air, instead of it just going bang, it'll go like that and stop, okay? It's a high speed deflection that it stops. So if you tighten it right up in the sand, great, if you're going across the top and you don't want this. But if you're in the ruts and the bike is having to do this, like when we're in a rut, and it can't do that, it will then fight itself and you'll climb up the edge of the rut and you'll crash. So steering dampers, not the best things for sand, and I've done enough Simpson crossings to know. So yeah, steering dampers, high speed oscillations, end of the day, the tree root you don't see, the rut you don't see, all that sort of stuff. Are they worth it? Hell yeah they are. Does the bike need it? No, not really. But it might save you bacon. All right, we're going to talk tyres. The tyres are a very passionate thing. Before I start all of this, we use Prellis. We use Prellis by choice. We were offered another company, offered us free tyres. We tested them uh, a year or so ago. None of the crew really got on with them. We didn't like the wear. We didn't like, so we stuck with the Prellis. We don't get them for free, we pay for them, but we get them discounted, so heads off. So we run the Prelli uh, 9090 21 Rally Front. Love it, great tyre, good case. It's a rally proven tyre. Good protection, good grip. Um, resistance to heel and toeing quite well, so it's pretty good. The back we run is a 140-80-18. And I can hear them all going, oh, you can't run a 140. Actually, you can, and we have for a long time. We took all the 159.08s off the Yamaha media bikes for the launch, and we ran these at our recommendation when we tested them against the RR908. There's a reason for that. Great compound, good wear. Um, Rooster's just about to slip around the back and go and grab one that's done 5,000 kilometers that we rode it to the end of it is here. I'll get to that in a minute. These are a great tie. We love them, we use them. We've had maybe one rear flat, maybe two I think in that time. No front flats, they've been pretty good. And mind you, next week we're doing the bridge to bridge and there's no doubt I'll be changing flat tires having said all that. Now, we didn't just settle on these tires. So last year, well start this year I think it was, sorry, yeah, pre-COVID, I did three days down at St Albans on a 130k loop where I ran eight different rears and nine different fronts, okay? It was interesting, Pirelli knew what we were doing, I spoke to the rep and these were still my tyre of choice at the end, but 
and a close bite is a few seconds. A few, few that I like to come in a second. By the way, there's that. It's done 5,000 kilometers. Uh, I went on a pre-run and came back with it like that. While ever it wasn't muddy, it was a good tire. They're quite a really good tire. Really happy with them. My second favorite front was the Motors Rail Z tube tight. Uh, great tire. I liked it as my second front. Um, I thought it tram lined a little bit, but other than that, I thought that was a good tire and that was my second choice. One of my least favorite tires was the Motors rear because it's so heavy. Now, it's a 150, 70, 18, which is the recommended tire size for this bike. The tire is about 1.8 kilos, I think 1.6 kilos heavier than that tire. And you really feel it when you're trying to tip the bike off its center. Like, it's it's a real difference. Also, compound-wise, it doesn't have the grip that that has. But a lot of bikes using them. You'll probably get an extra 1,000 Ks, maybe a little bit more out of that than you will that. That'll be there in that Hail Mary moment when you really need it. That'll be there long and hard. At the moment, if you just come over this way, Clay, I know you don't like moving with the camera. To prove we don't give up testing, we continue to test and we continue to pay for all that stuff. Here's a 908. One of my guys wanted to try. Sure, fella, let's give it a crack. Okay? We don't stop testing and we pay for everything we test. So lastly for this episode, we're gonna talk about suspension. Now, a lot of passion goes around this. I'm a fuller size, portly, athletic man. Um, people say I'm out of shape, that's not true. Round is a shape. So suspension is, is pretty critical to me. I, I, I can ride along at a reasonable pace. So with my size and that, suspension demands are pretty, I, I demand a lot of my suspension. We work with Technic Motorsport. Nick Dole at Technic Motorsport is by far the most experienced uh, suspension guy in Australia, especially on adventure bikes. He's also the guy that best understands dynos, the guy that had the first dynos, and the guys that gone on to sell dynos to, to Newcastle Blakes and all that. He's that guy, right? <coughs> We've been working with him on these since November last year, and we went a little bit the wrong direction to start, which was my fault. I was demanding something of it that uh, I shouldn't have been, and I got a little bit caught up in this this hype of running around and doing a skid and doing a jump and I forgot it's actually an adventure bike and now we're back to that now. So my bike here has a revalved standard shock absorber, revalved resprung. Technics uh, IP in that in the shim pack and the way they've done that and I'm not going to talk about that. But of interest at the moment I'm testing a set of Andriani off-road rally fork inserts, cartridge inserts. Now these are a thousand bucks. So they're not a $3,000 island kit. They're not a $2,000, $2,500 rally raid. They're a $1,000 kit, they're, and they're really good. Straight out of the box, they're, they're probably one spring set under sprung for me at the moment, and we'll get back to that later, but they are unreal. And it's one compression, sorry, one rebound, one, one leg compression. I love them, really, really good. This bike here is Rooster's bike. It has a standard shock absorber with a heavier spring for the for the bags and the rotor packs he carries at the back. So a standard shock, re-sprung. Been playing with the clickers and he's been working with Paul, our sweep, and they've got that to where they want it. Rooster's forks, on the other hand, are standard valving with a set of progressive sprung fork springs from Technics. And by the way, all the Technic springs are correct length. They don't need any spaces they come correct length. It's Nick's having them made at correct length. So these are a set of progressive wound springs in the front and they've been playing with the clickers on that and Rooster's really happy with that and we're gonna leave that one like that. This here is Mick G's bike. This has got a set of Technic, uh, Technic modified standard Yamaha suspension, revalved, re-shock, re-sprung for, for Mick. It's weight and the forks are, are, are setting like my old forks were, but slightly softer. So they've been revalved and he has standard springs with six mil spaces, preload spaces. Crash's bike, revalved, 
standard springs, one spacer, and a revalve rear shock with an eight kilo spring, 8.5 kilo, eight, eight kilo spring for crashing its way. So we're trying a lot of different things. And over the back, the Bumblebee has a TFX shock in it that we're taking out. Hasn't really worked, hasn't been where we are. It's also got a set of Andriani cartridges in it, but they were the original cartridges, nowhere near as good as the rally cartridges. So that's where we are with suspension. And that's where we are with Rider DV. In our next episode, we're gonna talk about rotor packs, tank bags. We're gonna talk about GPS mounts, why we mount them where we do, why we don't mount them when we don't mount them, and for those reasons. We're gonna talk about a couple of things. We're gonna talk about foot pegs. We're gonna talk about ultra heavy duty tubes while we run them uh, in different chains. So there's plenty to come. If you have any questions, down the bottom, just send them in. We will pretty well answer all, our, all the questions we get, we normally do. Um, just remember, we pay for everything we have, we test it, we don't stick with one thing, and we keep moving on. But when we find something we like, we do stick with it. So while I am here, I'd just like to thank the people that do support us. Adventure Moto, Bark Busters, DMK Designs, Technic Motorsport, Pirelli, um, the guys and girls at Yamaha, the fun dudes at uh, Dirt Bike Burrito, and i really like to thank my crew. These are soul of the earth guys that come out. Uh, you know, we've got medics, we've got all our guys, we've got experienced guys, we've got mechanics, we've got blokes that can ride. Just great people. Get on one of our tours. If you have any questions, ask us. We're happy to answer. And just remember, there's 11 of us testing this stuff, not just one.